the mechanism for international criminal tribunals is now in session. L'audience du mécanisme tribunal pénal international est ouverte. Please be seated. Asseyez-vous, s'il vous plaît. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is case MICT 1596 PT, the prosecutor versus Jovika Stanisic and Franko Zimatovic. Thanks. I am Burton Hall, the presiding judge in this case, as well as the pre appeal judge. May we begin by taking the appearances, please, beginning with the prosecution. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Matthias Markusen. I am here today with Grace Harbour and as our case manager, Ian Reed. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, my name is Wayne Jordash. I'm here with my co-counsel, Scott Martin, and I represent Mr. Stanisic. We represent Mr. Stanisic. Thank you. May I inquire? Uh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Mihailo Bakrac, and I represent the defense of Mr. Stanisic. Today, a member of our team, Melanie Vranjes, is here together with me. M may I, first of all, inquire as to whether the accused can both hear uh, what, what, we, what we are saying in a language that they understand. That's confirmed for Mr. Sasic. Thank you. Now, this is the initial appearance um, for the accused, Mr. Jovica Stanisic. Sorry. I thought he did. Thank you. Uh, yes. Greshke, u microphone. It was an error with the microphone with one of the accused, but I confirm for Mr. Simatovic that he can understand uh, what you're saying. Yeah. Um, today is the initial appearance for Mr. Jovica Stanisic and Mr. Franko Simatovic upon their transfer to the United Nations Detention Unit in The Hague on the 15th of December. This hearing will be conducted in accordance with Rule 64 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence of the Mechanism. Before adjourning the hearing, the parties will be provided with the opportunity to raise any additional relevant issues. The ICTY Appeals Chamber filed its judgment in the Stanisic and Samatovic case on the 9th of December 2015 and pronounced the judgment in public on the 15th of December. The ICTY Appeals Chamber quashed Mr. Stanisic's and Mr. Zimatovic's acquittals for aiding and abetting and committing through their participation in a joint criminal enterprise, murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war, and murder, deportation, other inhumane acts, forcible transfer, and crime and persecution as crimes against humanity. The ICTY Appeals Chamber ordered the retrial of Mr. Stanisic and Mr. Simatovic, Simatovic, I'm sorry, on all counts of the indictment, in accordance with Articles 1, sub-Article 2, and 12, sub-Article 1 of the Statute of the Mechanism, 
and Article 1, Sub-Article 4 of the Transitional Arrangements annexed to the Statute. The retrial will take place before the trial chamber of the mechanism. Before we continue, I would wish to inform each of the accused that you have a fundamental right to remain silent throughout these proceedings and that this will not be held against you. Further, Articles 18 and 19 of the Statute of the Mechanism guarantee the accused a number of rights, and I would ask the Registrar now to kindly read the two articles in full. Madam Registrar. Rule 14, rights... Uh, Article 18, commencement and conduct of trial proceedings. The, the single judge or trial chambers conducting a trial shall ensure that the trial is fair and expeditious and that proceedings are conducted in accordance with the rules of procedure and evidence with full respect of the rights of the accused and due regard for the protection of wit victims and witnesses. A person against whom an indictment has been confirmed shall, pursuant to an order or an arrest warrant of the mechanism, be taken into custody, immediately informed of the charges against him or her, and transferred to the mechanism. This Kindly slow down for the purposes of the interpretation. Thank you. Or judge of the trial chamber designated by the president shall read the indictment, ensure that the rights of the accused are respected, confirm that the accused understands the indictment, and instruct the accused to enter a plea. The single judge or trial chamber shall then set the date for trial. The hearing shall be public unless the single judge or trial chamber decides to close the proceedings in accordance with its rule of procedure and evidence. Article 19, Rights of the Accused. All persons shall be equal before the mechanism. In the determination of charges against him or her, the accused shall be entitled to a fair and public hearing, subject to Article 20 of the statute. The accused shall be presumed innocent until proved guilty according to the provisions of the present statute. In the termination of any charge against the accused pursuant to the present statute, the accused shall be entitled to the following minimum guarantees in full equality. A, to be informed promptly and in detail in a language which she or she understands of the nature and cause of the charge against him or her. B, to have adequate time and facilities for the preparation of his or her defense and to communicate with counsel of his or her own choosing. C, to be tried without undue delay. D, to be tried in his or her presence and to defend himself or herself in person or through legal assistance of his own choosing. To be informed if he or she does not have legal assistance of this right and to have legal assistance assigned to him or her in any case where the interests of justice so require and without payment by him or her in any such case if he or she does not have sufficient means to pay for it. To examine or have examined the witnesses against him or her and to obtain the attendance and examination of witnesses on his or her behalf under the same conditions as witnesses against him or her. To have the free assistance of an interpreter if he or she cannot understand or speak the language used in the mechanism. Not to be compelled to testify against himself or herself or to confess guilt. Thank you, Madam Registrar. May I inquire in turn of counsel of record for each of the accused 
as to whether um, the, each of the accused has received a copy of the indictment and um, dated the 10th of July 2008 in, a langu in their own language and that they understand the contents. I can confirm on behalf of Mr. Stanisic is extremely familiar with the indictment. Thank you. I can also confirm the same on behalf of the accused, Mr. Franco Simatovic. Now, in accordance with Rule 64, the accused are entitled to have the indictment read out in court today. So my next question of each of the accused in turn again answering through their uh, counsel of record, is whether they wish to have the indictment read out or whether they would wish to waive the, ri the right in this regard. Uh, we're happy to waive, Your Honor. Mr. Simatovic also waives his right to have the indictment read out to him. At the original trial, I note that at the initial appearance, each of you entered pleas of not guilty in relation to all counts of the indictment. So my question today is, again, of each of the accused in turn, is whether you wish to maintain your original plea or whether you wish to enter a new plea. Mr. Stanisic uh, maintains his original pleas of not guilty to each count of the indictment. Mr. Simatovic also maintains his original plea of not guilty to each count of the indictment. It follows that in accordance with Rule 64B of the rules, a date will be set for the commencement of the trial in due course, and the trial preparation will take place in accordance with Rules 69 and 70 of the rules. Uh, before I inquire of the parties as to whether there are any other issues which they wish to raise. Um, the Chamber, of course, has received the applications for provisional release filed by each of the accused, and the I would um, request the prosecution to file an expedited response by Tuesday of next week. That would be the 20, Tuesday of next week. Thank you. Now, do any of the, uh, does the prosecution have any other matters which they, raise, which they wish to raise today? Uh, no, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honour, I'd, I'd like to, if I may, just return to the issue of provisional release. Um, we've spoken to the prosecution about our application, and as I understand the situation, um, they are tending to incline to not disagree or not oppose the application. One of the concerns they do have, and this was a concern uh, in the original trial, is the health of the accused. And uh, Your Honour may not be familiar with this, but uh, during the previous trial, the... Sorry, do we need to go into private session for what you're about to say? No, yeah. I don't think so. I'm not going to go into details. Uh, yes, other, other than to say that the previous court kept uh, a uh, clear and firm...
hold over the medical uh, situation and inst in, in instigated a process by which Mr. Stanisic's health was monitored, and that included a monitoring of his health while he was on provisional release. And the prosecution have indicated today that uh, they would be, if they don't, do not oppose provisional release, they would like to have some kind of monitoring uh, for the future grant of provisional release if your honours decide to grant. So all that to say, uh, I think that the way forward would be in these circumstances would be that the prosecution would want somebody from the detention centre, uh, somebody attached to the court in some way, a medical expert, to briefly examine Mr. Stanisic and just confirm that he's, uh, amongst a number of other concerns, but largely to confirm that he's healthy enough to travel uh, to the to home uh, and healthy enough to travel back to the court when his attendance is required. And I raise that now simply because um, I would invite Your Honour to uh, perhaps uh, pass that order now so a medical report could be obtained from the detention centre prior to Tuesday so that if the prosecution uh, do not oppose on Tuesday, Your Honours will be in full possession of all the necessary facts, I hope, including an up-to-date uh, independent medical uh, report from the detention centre, which would allow Your Honours to make the decision uh, expeditiously and hopefully in due time for Mr. Stanisic to return home to his family prior to Christmas. And Your Honour will obviously understand that that at the moment is uh, Mr. Stanisic's principal uh, concern. So I would invite Your Honour, um, if, if not now, but certainly prior to Tuesday, to order a medical record, uh, a me medical report of Mr. Stanisic through his doctors in the detention centre just to confirm uh, those aspects uh, that I've just mentioned. If, if, if I may, Your Honour, um I, I guess my first question was actually going to be whether or not your honour and the chamber would uh, prefer to have written submissions from our side uh, or whether you would like us to make uh, submissions uh, today. Uh, uh, sorry, on this, on this narrow question or on the question of provisional release? Well, I, I am in, in, in a position to, to, uh, to state my position on, on provisional release. Um, so we could we could do that today, but I am really at your hands as to whether or not uh, you would prefer written submissions. Uh, we could undertake them, uh, undertake to file certainly within the deadline you have been given, or we could even aim for written submissions by Monday, if the chamber would have that preference. Um, I would I would agree with my colleague that. Uh, uh, it, it would be helpful from our perspective to have a medical examination, and I, I can go a bit more into to the reasons for that if that is helpful. Um, but I guess my, my first question is, would you, would you like further submissions today, or is your preference that we put our submissions in writing? Sorry to leap up, Your Honor. Just, um, could I just, um, uh, I guess, place a tiny bit of pressure on Your Honor in the sense that I think it would be useful to your honour to hear just a little more from the prosecution about the need for a medical report because that, in our submission, need not have to wait until uh, Tuesday. The detention centre could be informed that your honours are looking to have these questions answered and that could uh, hopefully mean that the doctor could be in place on Monday morning so that there isn't any delay with Mr. The, the consideration of this issue. Yeah. May I have a moment, please? In terms of the application that Mr. Jordash would have made um, on his feet uh, for a medical report 
that is so ordered um, to the extent that any um, consequential uh, written order is necessary, that will be taken care of administratively. As for the um, Mr. Markison's question about written submissions, um, I would uh, counsel would appreciate, of course, that the um, this trial being presided over by, by the mechanism involves judges, not all of whom are in one place at the same time. And therefore, it turns out that it would be simpler uh, for all concerned if um, the, the submissions could be submitted, uh, c written submissions could be made, which would facilitate the decision by the, by the full bench. Yes. Grateful for your Honour's decision. Are there any other matters that anybody else has to raise? I would only raise one issue, and it's a very small one, but it's, it's simply to um, ask, I guess, for what is obvious in many ways. Um, we're all in a new situation, uh, a situation that um, certainly we didn't expect ourselves to be in, and we are, I'm speaking on behalf of Mr. Stanisic, concerned uh, about the way in which things will progress from now. Um, and I'm principally aiming at the trial schedule and when the trial would start. And as I said, none of us expected to be in this position. And um, it's two and a half years since the trial finished. And um, lives moved on, and I'm not just talking about the um, accused's life. So we are, I think, as a defense bar, concerned about the scheduling and when uh, this prosecution will begin. And I would simply just say, just to, so I don't detain Your Honor for any longer than necessary, I would ask that we are allowed uh, full input, uh, perhaps um, greater input than would ordinarily be the case um, in terms of the way in which the trial is uh, from here on scheduled. This is a different situation in the sense that when I started this trial in 2004, I was making an active decision about my trial schedule and we were all beginning a trial which we all, uh, how can I put it, invited into our lives other than the accused of course so we are just concerned and I wanted to get that on record that we are hopefully um, able to be consulted and able to participate in any decision making concerning when the trial uh, it begins so that we can accommodate first and foremost of course the accused and that's my main our main concern but also um, ourselves Thank you for allowing me to make those submissions. Your Honor, let me not take m much of your time. The Simatovic defense is in the same position as the Stanisic defense team, and I fully support everything that my learned friend Mr. Jordash said but let me add for the record that Simatovic Defense supports this request and wishes to take active participation in further scheduling of the beginning of the trial. Yes, um, the concerns of counsel are of course appreciated, and um, but the only comment that I could intelligently make at this point is that um, those concerns are now part of the record and have been noted. Council would appreciate that we sit today three days after the um, appeals chamber would have ordered a retrial. So, indeed, those things are, in fact, moving quite speedily. And um, we will see how matters develop and evolve in the weeks to come. And I deliberately use the word weeks rather than months, if that offers any glimmer of hope to the parties. 
And if there are no other matters... Uh, sorry to, um, to leap up again. Um, in some way, my submissions were directed at the opposite, which is that, um, and I didn't really want to get this specific, but I think I, I ought to. Um, we are hoping, in fact, for a longer pretrial period than Yuan has just indicated, because, as I said, l lives have moved on, and we all have families and employment elsewhere, and um, we are hoping, uh, if we can, to stay on this trial. Um, but if the trial schedule doesn't suit uh, our prior commitments, and I have, we have, um, myself and Mr. Martin have commitments in various countries and to various governments, in fact. And uh, whilst we are committed to uh, our client, uh, we also have a number of other clients, and um, if at all possible, we want to be able to accommodate all, um, and that's our principal concern. Um, in our submission, of course, uh, from my jurisdiction and also my experience internationally, it's always preferable to keep trial counsel for any retrial. Um, but, um, like I say, we have um, commitments elsewhere, and... Um, they are now in, in conflict, and I would hope uh, for an opportunity to address your, your honours when the full, uh, your full complement is here on those conflicts and how we might be able to resolve them uh, to uh, ensure uh, smooth administration of justice. So I hope I've um, clarified our preliminary position at least. Well, Mr. Do Mr. George Ash, I didn't mean to alarm you <laughs> when I spoke about weeks rather than months. Um, all I meant to convey is that the um, pretrial process, which will, um, with its um, various administrative and consequential arrangements, begin immediately. Now, the, um, this would... Um, Council would be, I should say the parties, would be uh, informed, notified, whatever, as progress is made. But um, the, we are, uh, this is a trial de novo. So therefore, we begin with the pretrial process. And um, to repeat what I said earlier, concerns have been noted and we will see what happens. Your Honor, thank you. I, I, I feel I can sleep a little easier this weekend. <laughs> Just so that your Honor, with your leave, I would like to take up a minute or two of your time just to add something to what my learned colleague, uh, Mr. Jordish, has said. Sometimes it would appear uh, that things are easier once you have already uh, been uh, in a trial, but after two and a half years uh, of uh, a break, I think it's even more difficult to start proceedings with uh, uh, exhibits that we have already uh, dealt with because uh, we risk uh, being convinced of the fact that uh, all these exhibits have already been uh, stored in our memories somewhere. So after such a long break, uh, we'll have to concentrate on those issues even more. And the second thing I would like to say, after the first trial judgment was taken, there were two cases here that, uh, in terms of geography at least, are connected to this case. Many new exhibits and many new uh, witnesses appeared uh, in those cases, and we will therefore need a significant amount of time to familiarize ourselves with the exhibits and the testimonies from those two cases. And uh, I should also emphasize the fact that we have to compose our team again with our legal uh, advisors uh, and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to add something to what my learned colleague, uh, Mr. Jordash, has uh, already stated uh, for the sake of the record. Thank you very much. Is there anything else? Um. 
Your, your Honor, it's, it's looking at me. I don't uh, know whether you were, were looking at me for a position on this. The prosecution, of course, um, stands ready to, to proceed and is uh, eager to um, ensure that the trial move forward as expeditiously as possible. Uh, we have, to, of course, moved to a new jurisdiction of the MICT, although some of us are maybe familiar faces. Um, to some extent, uh, we have uh, issues similar to the defense in terms of being able to uh, compose a team. Uh, um, but I do not expect that to be uh, something that would hold, from our side, would need to hold up uh, proceedings for a long time. Um, and we certainly do our utmost to be, be ready when your honors uh, wish us to be able to start. But of course, we also on our side need some time to um, get on top of uh, the case and get all the paperwork lined up that is required to move on. Thank you. Well, before I um, adjourn these proceedings, I take the occasion to wish everyone a safe uh, holiday season and all the best for the new year. So, um, Madam Registrar, you take the, the, the adjourn the court. All rise. Who would have heard?